at 9.30 p.m. Monday evening, Denver Avenue broke in two, spilling a sea of wreckage further east. In its path, a portion of Union Avenue gave way next. Three separate breaks had turned the area into one shroud of water. By now, traffic and telephone service had been severed between Portland and Vancouver. A network of amateur radio operators, or HAMS, helped maintain communications regionally and across the U.S. Memorial Day weekend had left nearly 18,000 Van Porters homeless, including up to 6,000 African Americans. We didn't have FEMA. We didn't have all the things that you have in place, you know, today. You know, that didn't exist in uh, 1948. Refugees were asked to register with the Red Cross for emergency housing, food and clothing, cots and blankets. Nearby schools, churches, and community centers offered temporary shelter. You've got kids on mats and what have you on the floor at Jefferson High School. The same existed with mats and mattresses on the floor at the church. And I can remember that what we took was the pot roast, because mom said she didn't know where we would be. And that's the thinking of a mom. Uh, so wherever we were going to be, at least you would be fed. And then my dog, I got my dog out, my dog Tippy, and, and a doll. That was all that we, were, we took to get out of Vanport, my prized possessions. The people that gave us a ride out took us to our church downtown, and the Salvation Army, immediately they started making sandwiches, <laughs> getting big pots of coffee, and my husband went out on Salvation Army trucks. So in the mornings, we would make great big tubs of uh, oatmeal porridge, you know, <laughs> and take it to the schools where a lot of the people were sheltered. More than a 1,000 refugees were sent to the Navy barracks at Swan Island. We moved there. If you had a small family, you just stayed in one room. And if you had a bigger family, you had to stay in rooms across the hall or next door. And then we ate at the cafeteria. So we lined up for food, for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Others found refuge in unexpected places. My brother said the bus first took us to a school in North Portland, and then two families came, two white families, and one took dad and the two boys, and one took mother and me and my two sisters. Now, mother never ever talked about those people. She just said they were white, and dad just said they were white, and she never ever got their name. And I kind of suspect, coming from the South, they were not comfortable talking to white people because in the South, you were not allowed to talk to them at all. When I learned about the racial tone of Portland, I thought, wow, those must have been some really good Christian people to take us in like that. One very important thing, after the flood, the people in Portland um, were very, very accepting. And I think it's an American thing that if there's a tragedy, sometimes old hatreds are put on hold and so it was, I think, an amazing bit of cooperation and, and helpfulness that was going on. 